Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Let's talk not just about Raw, but let's talk about WWE in general and what's happening these days under Triple H's leadership. So Jey Uso is the new Intercontinental Champion, which is huge but also unexpected. Nobody expected this to happen and quite frankly, that's why this is brilliant. I would like the theme of this particular video to be the beauty of the unexpected and building anticipation, yes. Sometimes the WWE needs to give us something that is unexpected. That's what makes things more exciting. Plus, big people lose sometimes. Like how in this case, Braun Breaker lost, and that's okay. We all know sports entertainment, aka WWE, is all about booking and scripting. But the beauty lies in making things seem real, and that is why sometimes things need to come from nowhere, because that's life. Anyways, as many have said already, this is great for Jey Uso. He finally gets a singles championship, and he deserves this since he is so over with the fans. Man, this was a moment, and the match was just exciting as well, and, and well done. How long will Jey Uso be a champion? That's tough to say. But that's where anticipation comes into play. How will this move forward? Speaking of anticipation, Bronson Reed and Braun Strowman get into a brawl again. No, no, that's not where anticipation comes into play. Regarding anticipation, we will now be having a last monster standing match next week on Raw. Triple H knows how to build things. It's been a while since the WWE has given us the type of matches they are giving us regularly these days in regards to the frequency. A strap match, the I Quit match between Cody and AJ Styles, Seth Rollins as the guest referee in the CM Punk Drew McIntyre match, the Hell in the Cell match, and now this. Obviously, we have seen such things during previous eras of the WWE, but there is something unique about the Triple H period. He knows how to build stories and therefore anticipation. So many people are just fantasy booking these days. Oh, and we will be seeing Dom Mysterio hanging from the top of the ring in a shark cage as Rhea Ripley goes against Liv Morgan. It's such an interesting setup, and it's fun to try and fantasy book such scenarios. What could possibly happen? Liv would figure out some game plan perhaps, but will she succeed? Is it too early for Rhea to actually beat Liv, or is there more to the story? So many possibilities and so many things we could anticipate. I know I've been talking about Raw till now, so let's look at SmackDown. Cody Rhodes teams up with Roman Reigns. There are mixed feelings on this. But with these mixed feelings, we all do wonder what the bigger idea is, correct? How will this play out between Cody and Roman Reigns in the long run? My fantasy booking is that Cody gets beaten before the match by the rogue bloodline since he should stay out of family matters, leaving Roman in a handicap match. Then what? What is going on with Kevin Owens and the hints that he will turn on Cody? We know Kevin isn't happy with Cody aligning with Roman. There are just so many things happening these days. The entire Bloodline saga has an endless number of folks fantasy booking everything that could possibly happen moving forward. The biggest thing being The Rock's return down the road. But before that, Jimmy Uso and Paul Heyman. There are so many things set up, which is what leads to anticipation. Slow story building leads to anticipation. And then a delay leads to more anticipation. It's amazing and builds hype. Even something like Naomi and Bailey ending a match in the confused manner in which they ended their match last week on SmackDown. Both ended up pinning at the same time. Now what? The constant anticipation of when Tiffany Stratton will finally use her Money in the Bank briefcase, screwing her buddy Nia Jax, because they are leading us to believe something like that will happen, eventually. Back on Raw, the entire Judgment Day scenario. Maybe I'm thinking too far, but for how long will this Liv and Dom love story continue for? Is Dom also being used somehow? In the Finn Balor vs. Damian Priest match, it seems obvious that Damian would win, since he has had quite the build-up since he cashed in his money in the bank at WrestleMania. Meanwhile, Finn hasn't really been built properly. I consider that to be a flaw. But then, is it meant to be that way? Will we somehow get the unexpected at Bad Blood and Damien gets screwed perhaps somehow? Who knows? 
All I know is that the WWE is on fire these days, and I hope it stays this way. The main reason behind this success, I believe, is the unpredictability factor and the anticipation factor. Well guys, that's that. This is my analysis of the WWE in general. Under the Triple H era, however, this is just one part of it. Anticipation and unpredictability is just one factor to this. There are other elements as well. Maybe we'll get to that in my later videos. Who knows? But right now, things are getting very intense, and I'm excited for Bad Blood. The match card is, is pretty exciting. Let's see, man, because the thing is that when things get exciting, sometimes things also go in the opposite direction, and we see a slowdown. And every now and then, there is a slowdown. I'll definitely say Raw is more exciting than SmackDown. I mean, there's just more going on while SmackDown has, you know, the bloodline and that whole thing going on. It has Cody Rhodes, the Undisputed Champion. But overall, Raw just seems to have more edge to it. But overall, it's just an exciting time for the WWE. And uh, yeah, guys, that's that. Uh, please do like, share, subscribe. And till next time, peace out.